Hi, I'm Amber and welcome to the Lone Star Keto Podcast. Today we have a special guest with us, Tim James. He is the CEO of Chemical Free Body. He is a podcast host of Health Hero Show and a transformation coach. Welcome, Tim. Amber, thanks for having me on your show today. I'm excited to uh, share with your listeners. Absolutely. And today we're going to be talking about how to pick the right supplementation, because I think a lot of us are very confused about what supplements we really need. And especially like if you think you are eating a nutrient dense diet, why in the world would you need supplementation, whether you're a vegan or all the way to the other side, a carnivore? So first of all, let's start with um, telling us a little bit about your background. Sure. So um, as we talked about earlier, you're from Texas. So probably a few rednecks around there. Hopefully you got a few (laughs) rednecks listen to this. So I grew up in Eastern Oregon, total redneck, hunting and fishing, grew up on a cattle and hay farm. Uh, We had Hereford cattle and we did grass and alfalfa hay. And um, I spent a lot of time in the woods with my buddies. Um, I put myself through college chopping firewood. That was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, played baseball at a high level, just had a great childhood. I had a lot of fun. You know, I wouldn't change it for anything. I would not want to, no offense for the city slickers out there, but (laughs) I just loved growing up out in in nature. It was really awesome. So, um, you know, fast forward age 37, I was, a I had moved to Portland, Oregon, (laughs) which was against the whole thing I just talked about. My dad, when he, my dad, the closer we'd get to Portland, which is a, the bigger city here in Oregon, he would just, he would get angry. So he'd like to get the hell out of there. But um, I moved down here and uh, was a financial advisor, had a house and a mortgage and a couple kids. And I was coaching, you know, sports for kids. And um, I'd found myself uh, 42 pounds overweight. I had no energy. Um, I'd stopped going to the gym, which I was a gym. I was always there at like, I got up at 5 a.m. every morning and I was in the gym with my buddies. And when I moved across town, I just got disconnected from them and I just never found my way back into the gym. I could, the only thing that I was doing for exercise, Amber was basically walking the dogs because I knew they couldn't walk themselves. It was a struggle. Um, and then it got worse for me. I had um, acid reflux really bad. Doctor wanted me to go on Prilosec and some other stuff. And I just, it sounded weird. So I just like, no, I'll just stick to Tums and Roll Aids. So for years, I've just like eating Tums and Rolaids like candy. I don't know if anybody out there is listening is dealing with this, but please listen to this episode and stick around to the end because I haven't had, I haven't had that acid reflux in 11 years now. And I'll show you how to get rid of it. So I eat Tums and Rolaids 24 seven. And then I started getting eczema on my knee and then it's got worse and worse and worse. It started cracking and bleeding. And then it showed up on both of my elbows cracking and bleeding and every year these patches of just weird skin were getting worse and I couldn't even wear white shirts anymore as a financial advisor because they'd bleed all over them and ruin them and stain them so it was like I started wearing dark shirts um I was a very I'm a very like outgoing a type personality you know I like to you know get out and do stuff and talk and and I found myself going to the beach and I didn't want to take my shirt off I was like my whole universe was like collapsing in on me it was not it was contracting instead of expanding and growing this was part of our human experience where it's supposed to be. And, um, and then I had another skin issue on my back shoulder. It was kind of gross and I had to have an injection to get rid of it. And then it came back in three other places. And then I'm thinking, God, what happens if this stuff bubbles up on my face? You know, so this is, and you, okay, you think that's bad. Well, then all of a sudden the last two and a half years before I fixed this problem, I started bleeding rectally. So every time I'd poop, blood would come out. So on a scale of one to 10, one being not painful and 10, very painful, it was about a six or a seven in the pain scale, just to poop. And then blood would come out. So think about it. My knees or my left knee, my elbows are bleeding. I'm bleeding when I poop. It's very painful. And you have to poop a couple times a day, hopefully. So, um, and after it happened, I'm like, well, I hope that goes away. So my head was buried in the sand and I just didn't, you know, I was, I was trying high carb, low carb, high fat, low fat, high protein, low car. I mean, I was mixing them all over the place, five meals a day, trying all this stuff. You know, st- some stuff would work a little bit. I even bought a juicer back in the day and I juiced for about a month, but I didn't, you know, I was juicing carrots and apples and like beets, which are all full of sugar. And I didn't know it. Um, did you know that like a cup of carrot juice or, or excuse me, a quart of carrot juice or a quart of beet juice has like a cup of sugar in it, cup, cup and a half of sugar. Like, I didn't know that. So my juicer went under the cupboard, right? So I was always trying to figure out ways to try to freaking lose weight and like feel better. And I just couldn't figure it out. So, um, and then it got worse. I was on a 
uh, a trip that we planned out to, to northern Peru, a place called Tumbes. It's right below Ecuador. And beautiful beaches, isolated, one plane in and out a day. It was, it was unbelievable. Like just the, the seashells on the beach looked like they should have been in the Smithsonian. I mean, it was just, I mean, just talking native, beautiful, unbelievable stuff. And a few days into the trip, I'm doubled over in pain. Um, luckily for me, my wife's dad was there with us as a medical doctor. He ran a big clinic in Lima. And um, I missed the darn plane by 30 minutes. I just couldn't get to it in time. So they had to put me on a bus, like a little a van, actually. And I had in this bumpy road all the way down the coastline to a town called Peor. Six-hour drive, super bumpy. Every bump hurt. I was in tremendous pain. And here I am laying on this examination table and there's third world country and there's bugs flying around me. And I'm thinking I have paid into my health insurance my whole life. And now I can't even use the damn thing. I was so upset. Um, but scared too, you know, cause, and, but her dad didn't want me to operate there. So he had his whole, so that he had those doctors dope me up and they actually put me on a commercial plane flight. Okay. For anybody listening, you're not supposed to do this. Like, don't do it. Like you should, you should stay at the hospital. So, I got on the plane, we flew in and I went to a taxi and I went right into surgery immediately. Mm. And um, they caught it right before it was a big problem. So um, I, what I learned from that lesson and I spent the rest of the time recovering and then my wife actually had to wheelchair me back into the States. So that was my vacation. So what I realized from that experience was, is that my poor health doesn't affect just me. It affects everybody else around me especially the people that closest to me that I love. So if I truly, really love my family and friends, the people that care for me the most, I really have to start loving myself and caring for myself. Otherwise a wheel's going to fall off. I'm taking care of everybody else except for me. And then I can't help nobody. And then what kind of an example am I setting for my kids? Do I want them to be like, you know, 35 years old, 34 when this happened. Um, and overweight, all these health issues, bleeding all over the place, no energy. I considered myself an athlete. I couldn't even run around a track once without huffing and puffing. Like it was bad. And if you can't run around a track one lap without huffing and puffing, like we've got problems in this country. I mean, our, our public health is so bad. We have terrible infrastructure. We're a D minus in infrastructure. Um, thanks to our politicians on both sides. We really need this, con this company, country needs an enema. <laughs> That's what we need. We need an enema. We need working class people to unite and come together again, like the, like the women did at the turn of the century and got the urine and the feces and all this garbage off the streets and got the eight hour work day and got children out of the labor force. A lot of people aren't aware of that, but it was, the, it was a bunch of pissed off women that actually made America great in the first place. So for those women out there listening, we need you to unite again, please. Um, and men too. So, but back to my story, um, so here I am, um, you know, going through all this stuff. And, and then a buddy of mine on my baseball team, Clay Mahoy gets diagnosed with uh, cancer and then he, we end up losing him. Um, and he had three little boys ages uh, six to 17. Um, it was terrible. Um, all these tough guys in the baseball team were all crying our eyes out at the, the funeral service and all this stuff at church and doing a fundraiser cause he didn't have insurance. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of different when you're my, my grandma died of brain cancer um, and she was older and it was terrible watching her go through that. And then my aunt died of brain cancer again, horrible. Like she had melanoma. It was bad. Like what she went through. My mom was a, just an angel, like a saint taking care of her. Um, basically her hospice worker. Um, unbelievable. My mom and you know, but people are older. You think people get old, they die of something. Right. So, okay, whatever. But clay was like 40. Okay. He's like my age. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like that had never happened before to me. So I was kind of questioning that. And then right after Clay died, uh, my buddy Charles at age 43, he gets diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is supposedly this incurable blood cancer. I mean, I couldn't even pronounce that word for like three weeks. I was like, just trying to say, I'm like, what, what do you have? I'm just like, I'm just going to call it cancer. <laughs> like, I can't even pronounce this. Right. And all I knew is I was about to lose another friend because that's been my experience. You get cancer, you die. That's been my experience. So my chart, my friend Charles said, Hey, look, um, you know, I don't want to die. So, um, I've, I'm going to book to stay at this place called the Hippocrates health Institute, their natural detox and nutrition clinic. And, um, we went there, uh, to, I went there to support him and, now you have to understand at this point, especially because these people, you guys listening are, are carnivores. Um, 
nobody ate more meat than I did. Like our motto was if it flies, it dies, it's brown, it's down. Like elk and chuckers and pheasants and deer and quail and and like I kept five freezers full. Like in the middle of the night during um college, like me and my buddy would after parties, we would grab, round up all the beers and stuff and go up in the middle of the woods and and go shoot a deer and bring it back and give it to people on the baseball team like Robin Hood because the guys are eating top ramen. They love they love me and love Sean. So I mean we were that's what we did. So Charles told me, he said, Hey, just so you know, like when we get there, there's no meat, there's no dairy, there's no salt, there's no sugar, there's nothing cooked over 115. I'm like, what? I'm like, you lost me at no meat, bro. And so I'm literally freaked out, like totally freaked out. But what I learned was, is that sometimes there's certain things you can do and it, 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 that you have to, you know, he was trying to, he was, he was like scraping, trying to live. He didn't want to die. He had a 14 year old son and he wanted to go to see his son graduate high school. And he wanted to go to father's son weekend and at Oregon University had this all planned out and he's like I want to live and when you look at your buddy and he's like got this fear in his eyes you're like dude I mean if it wasn't for Charles there's no way I would have set foot in that place so I go there I, I went through the program day one my acid reflux was gone no more Tums and Molates and then I this detox process started so this this guy came out and this doctor and he's super buff I mean just totally fit and I thought he was like 40 he was 50 turned 50 that day, Dr. Scott Josephson. And he taught this class called internal awareness. Now, what's what I learned from that was, is that um, from the time you eat food until the time it exits your body, everything that happens, they explained all that. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, but then he's trying to sell us on doing colonics. Are you familiar with those or colon hydrotherapy? Okay. For the listeners out there that are not aware of this, this is where you set on a tube rectally and water goes in and out of your colon for an hour and cleans your colon. So just imagine taking the tractor into the shop or the, the car, or your truck, flushing out the engine. The, the, the digestive tract is the driving engine of your life. So you got to clean it up, right? And a lot of it's been polluted because we don't drink enough water. That's number one. So, um, so he explains all this stuff and I'm just not going to do it. I'm like, I elbow Charles say, hey, look, dude, I come here to help you, but I'm not doing that clonic thing. There's just no way. I'm like, I'm not happy. It's not happening. But that doctor was very intelligent. He started showing videos of people. So he went into like a 24 year old woman that had um, Hashimoto's and thrush, which is like a yeast infection and a thyroid disorder. And inside of her colon was pretty freaking nasty. And I was like, crawl, my skin was crawling looking at it. And then 65 year old male with colon cancer, and parasites and it was black nasty in there and dark brown and, and then worms crawling around and then i'm flipping out and he's they say he's like oh by the way at least over 50 percent of you have these parasites in you right now and you're going to see these over the next two weeks crawling out of you and you'll see them in your stools and stuff like that and i'm like what so now i'm like Ugh, i'm freaking out right and then they showed like a 45 year old female with breast cancer and then like colitis or crohn's or some some type of digestive tract issue and um it's nasty in there. And then he shows the picture. He's like, now this is somebody that's been cleaned out, blah, blah, blah. Now he goes, these people eat the standard American diet. And this, these people eat like a wild creature, like we teach here, eating, you know, fresh food. And I'm like, whoa, um, I'm signing up. So I signed up and I went in there the next day. And he, in fact, he looked at me, he said, Tim, you got 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. And if you ever want to be healthy, truly healthy, you got to clean it up. So I signed up for the colon hydrotherapy session. I didn't want to do it, but after the videos, I was so scared. I'm like, I got to clean myself up. I mean, nobody ate more of the standard American diet than me. So they weighed me. I did it. An hour later, they weighed me again. I dropped 10 pounds of impacted fecal material in one hour. The record at the Institute was one lady dropped 27 pounds. Think about that. That's oh, like, the size of a, like a medium sized dog. Right. So after that, um, I'm, you know, I, I was talking about the detox symptoms. I have, I was very irritable. I had night sweats. I had a metallic taste on my tongue as the heavy metals were exiting my body, but I didn't have as bad as some people, Amber. Some people had rashes breaking out in parts of their body. Some one lady had like, I'd say probably 80% of her body was breaking out in a rash. Just who knows what was coming out, chemicals and toxins, all this stuff. And one lady at lunch had a parasite crawling out of her eye. And I was like, Hey, you have a parasite crawling out of your eye. And then people have parasites crawling out of their arms. A lot of us would see parasites in our stools. So we would see not just the big, long tapeworms and stuff. Yeah, people did have those, but they had like there's hookworms and pinworms and and your, your stool would like look like a fuzzy mushroom, like a white fuzzy mushroom, <laughs> all these white, white 
parasites and stuff. These things are like eating our food, drinking our drink. They're urinating and defecating in us and then creating this biofilm and they're having sex and laying thousands of eggs in us. So they create a lot of acid and almost everybody has parasites. So what we do is we teach people one of the protocols is you want to kill them, get rid of them, right? So get them out of there. Um, I mean, I guess having a little bit, whatever, natural balance, but for the most part on this acidic diet that we live on, we, we create the breeding ground for these things. And then they just start working their way in like, you know, like vines wrapping their way around a fence or something over time, they just get ingrained in there, you know? So, um, my acid reflex was gone. Um, within a week, I dropped 11 pounds. My energy went through the roof and I was walking back to the Hacienda with Charles after we did our little morning routine. I said, dude, do you feel as good as I do? I was like, I literally, my, my mental clarity is ridiculous. I like, I feel like I'm 15 again. Like my arms are tingling with energy. I said, we've discovered the fountain of youth. I'm like, I can't believe it. It's just, I can't believe it. We just had to clean up our body and eat these fresh foods and stuff. And he's like, yeah, it's like, let's, let's, I'm, yeah, I'm totally in, let's do it. And we, we just came home and we stick with the lifestyle. And within 60 days, I dropped 42 pounds. Both of the skin issues on my elbow and the one on my shoulder disappeared. Like I couldn't even believe it. Cause I was thought I was going to have to go get the doctor again. I said, can you look at that thing on my back, honey? And like, and she's like, it's gone. And she's like, what do you mean? It's gone. I like sprinted to the bathroom and looked, I'm like, no way. Like my body healed itself. Now the knee one was huge. It took forever. It'd been there for a long time. That took like eight months for that one to go away, but it slowly healed up over time. I could feel my ribs again All my gas and bloating was gone. My energy came back and my mental clarity and I could actually run around the track. Um, no problem. Right. And here I am 48. When I started this journey, I was 37. It's 11 years later and I'm way healthier today. And for 11 years, all I've been doing is geeking out on this stuff. Like, how can I get healthier? How can I look younger? How can I feel better? How can I boost my immune system? And how can I help other people do the same? Now, my friend Charles that had cancer, this is the best part of the story. He healed himself of cancer, no chemo, no surgery, no radiation. He just changed his lifestyle, got back into exercise, got a great attitude. And, um, you know, he got to see his son graduate high school. He got to go to the father-son weekend. And he's still alive. We played guitar a few weeks ago and he's still my friend and, and he's alive. So um, that's my story. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Okay. So this is funny. There has been a trend on TikTok. Okay. I admit it. I, I play on TikTok sometimes, but where they do these parasite cleanses. Mm -hmm. And they talk about all these things that you mention, And part of me is going, oh, bull, you know, it, and I, I'm like, I got to see pictures because I don't really believe this because they were talking about some coming out your nose, your ears or whatever. And yeah, you expect course. it in the stool, but I'm like, but nobody could produce a picture because they kept saying, oh, it's too gross. You know, and I'm like, no, I want to see. So you're saying that you actually have, have seen some of that in, in like the videos or whatever. Yeah. And actually in person quite a bit, because I've been doing wow. this work for quite a while. And, you know, I've coached over 600 people personally through the process and thousands of people, you know, through group situations. And I've had I've seen plenty of pictures. Um, all kinds of stuff from, from infected root, every root canal that somebody's had taken out always infected, even if the tooth's not bothering them every time it's infected. So for those listening, if you have a root canal, I know I, I do another talk called healthy dentistry and I go through the, you know, the things to look out for in dentistry and how to pick a good biological dentist and all that stuff. But you might have to save that for a different show, but, um, it's the same thing with the parasites. Like, I mean, think about it, like, um, they're everywhere. And if, if, if your immune system is built up like a top, like the walls around a castle, then you're good. But when the immune system drops from stress, okay, stress is the biggest one. And if you don't have tools to mitigate your stress, then you've knocked down your immune system and you are doing it. If you're not exercising, your immune system's down. If you're breathing polluted air, which most of us are, um, the water you're drinking is polluted. You know, the food's second rate, third rate. I mean, we're just disconnected from nature, all these things. Doo, doo, doo. And then maybe somebody's taking supplements, but they don't realize that they're taking a synthetic or they're taking a mixture of herbal and synthetic because it's cheaper for these companies and it's pulling down your immune system. So all these things going on, the walls drop down and then the rats and the bugs come in. Basically the, the viruses, the bacteria, the mold, the yeast, the cancers, the parasites, they can get over the walls because the walls are crumbled. So we just got to you know, 
clean up the castle and build the walls back up. I mean, this isn't rocket science, like being healthy. That's what I've learned is like the whole, whatever society is doing and whatever they're teaching. If you just go 180 degrees the other way, that's usually probably 95% of the time, the truth and the way to go. Like don't do, don't follow the herd. It's just that simple. And then like yes. good health, they try to make it like it. So it's like this huge thing and you have to have like all these degrees in order to figure shit out. It's like most doctors have high doctors have a higher suicide rate than the rest of the population. We really want to go listen to them. Like most doctors, no offense to most of them out there, but you know, the surgeons, they actually have to be pretty intelligent because they got to solve a problem. But most doctors just like, there's the problem and it's not their fault. They're the good boys and girls in the equation. Standard of care says, Oh, that's the problem. Give them that pill. That's the problem. Give them that pill. Are you really helping somebody like seriously? What's the plan to get, it's like, where in nature do people have a, like a, a, a single molecule or a synthetic uh, deficiency? Where are you going to see that? Most of the time, we're, it's the pollution, it's the synthetics and the toxins that are, are a contributing factor to our, our health issues. Then we go to a doctor and they give us more synthetic toxins in the form of a pill because they've been approved by some agencies or whatever. I mean, fucking look around like people, 80% of us are overweight, obese, or morbidly obese. We spend 3.3 trillion on healthcare in this country. We're the sickest that human beings have ever been walked the face of the earth. Why would we keep listening to these people? You know, the food pyramids and all this stuff changes all the time. The reality is, is like, it's nature. Okay. You want to get healthy, learn where all the man-made toxins and garbage and crap is, clean it out of your body, stop putting it in and go back to nature. What happened to just, you know, picking an animal, an apple and eating it or, you know, catching a fish and just, you know, cooking it right there and eating it. If people get too, everything's got to be, you know, boxed and canned. And, and the more you allow industry to come between you and your water and your food sources, your health's going to go in the toilet. There's just no question about it. So we just got to get back to fresh food. Yes. And, and that goes for no matter what spectrum you're on. It, it, the commonality is get rid of the crap, regardless of which way you decide to eat. Nobody needs packaged foods that has 500 ingredients. For instance, okay, say you're into uh, just eating plant food. Okay, fine. But going to the Beyond Burger, have you looked at the ingredients yeah, on that? That? Stuff's, that stuff's nasty. Don't ever eat that stuff. Anybody no. promoting like fake meats, if you're going to eat meat, just go freaking eat meat. Like don't eat fake meat. You know, I had people, I had somebody comment on something. I had kind of made a, a negative uh, post about the beyond meat, if you will, whatever mm -hmm. synthetic meat. And they were like, no, that is the most amazing uh, creation we could have because we, it was created in a lab and it's amazing. And it's not, you know, it's all great stuff. And I'm like, great stuff. Oh my goodness, look at the ingredients. How is that great stuff? And they're like, well, just tell me which one isn't good. And I'm like, I can tell you which ones might be okay. The rest are crap. That blew my mind. I'm like, I don't care what spectrum you're on. How can you say that's good? Yeah. Well, I think there's some, you know, I always like to get to like the root of the issue. And like, I started reading food labels years ago and going through all these ingredients and calling companies nobody does this stuff it takes it's like calling dmv you know it's just like let me put you on hold and like what's this ingredient um i don't know nobody knows like it takes forever for them to figure it out it says natural flavors well what exactly is that <laughs> right and then i found out by law for 70 years over 80 years now that it's like if it says natural flavors that could, uh, by law 90 percent can be chemical only 10 percent has to be natural and guess what almost in all cases it's 90 10 because chemicals are cheaper than hand gathering natural substances period that's just the way it is so these corporations they don't care about you they don't care about your family's health they care about profitability and shelf stability that's what they care about that's what they, they want to make money so but we Absolutely. have a fundamental issue whether you're eating plants or meat or anywhere in between in a balance there the soil is degraded. You know, I thought I was going to heal myself with whole foods, but after I read this book, I was like, Oh my God, 85% of the nutrition is farmed out of the soil. So if you're eating a plant, then you're, that was in that deficient soil, you're going to be deficient. Or if you're eating an animal that was eating the plant from the deficient soil, you're deficient. That's just how it works. Like if it, it's, it's not there, it's not in the soil. It won't be in the plant or the animal. So we have to supplement today. Supplementation is not a, 
it's not just some, you know, cool thing to do. It's like, it's a necessity today. You have to supplement to replace what's missing. Now there are a very small amount of people that don't have to. All their food is coming from nutrient dense soil and they're able to get access to that 365 days a year. Good luck. Most people listening to this podcast are not that person. It's just not, we have busy lifestyles and it's like, we're in reaction mode. What's for dinner tonight? I don't know. What do you want? You want pizza? You want burgers? You want, okay. You just call it in, call it in, whatever. And boom, it shows up. And you know, think about how bizarre this is. If you really think about it, you pull up to a fast food place, you order some food, they hand you food in a hot paper sack. You eat it and there's plastic and paper in there. And then you, you, then you, 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 where the food come from, what's in it. You have no clue. And then you, then you create a bunch of waste and then it's blown around in that, you know what I mean? The plastic and the, and the, and the sacks there. It's like, it's just really weird. Like nature doesn't work that way. Like you picking things or harvesting an animal. Um, that's kind of what we need to really get back to. So we really have to pay attention to the, to the, the nutrients. We have to replace those. Absolutely. Okay. So kind of help somebody really understand this. Okay. For instance, I eat a meat-based diet. Mm-hmm. Uh, call me carnivore, whatever. I don't care about the terms, but I feel like I eat a very nutrient dense diet about the best I can from the diet. And I try to make the best choices based off that. However, I I have the opportunity to get to test a lot because I try out different products that are sent to me. And so I get to test often and for various things. And one thing that I have been consistently low on, which really kind of blew my mind was magnesium. Now I do understand that that tends to be the one mineral that is lacking for most people, regardless of what their diet is. So can you walk through that? Why that is, you mentioned the soil and that, but can you kind of walk through how that can happen, even though you are doing the best you can with the diet. Okay. Well, the first thing is you're right. Most of us are magnesium deficient and it's a master nutrient. It's very important. So here's the deal. When, how does, how, how do we get magnesium? Well, you got to go back to the, to the roots and even farther. So in the soil are these things called soil microbiome. They're bacteria. They're in all the soil, right? Now, when you till, and I, and I grew up as a farmer, right? So I get this. When you till the soil, you disrupt and you kill a majority of these bacteria, these soil-based microorganisms. These little soil-based microorganisms are not supposed to be tilled. Their job is to do a lot of things. I can't get into all of it, but one of them is to transport nutrients from the soil into the root system of the plant. It's a symbiotic relationship. It's part of the cycle of life. So when you're, when you're eating foods that are consumed that are you know, first off, sprayed with pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, larvicides, and glyphosate. All these things are, are water-soluble molecules. They're going in, they're killing that soil-based bacteria. And then on top of it, then you till them up, right? So they're just really not plentiful enough in, to really transport the magnesium from the soil into the root system of the plant to get it to the animal that eats it, right? And then you eat it, right? Or if you eat the plant, either way. So we have to do it. We have to get a magnesium into our body. So a lot of people I've tried for years, different types of oral supplementation, but the problem with a lot of those is, is they'll actually wipe out your own bacteria in your gut um, because they turn to oxygen. So um, what we're looking for is we're looking for red blood cell saturation levels in our, for magnesium. And if I remember right, this, it needs to be between uh, 6.5 and like 7.2. Now, it's been so bad for so long that the medical community now is changing and they're saying you only need a five, I think is what it was, to qualify for full red blood cell magnesium levels. Mm. That's not the case because when asked that, why are you changing the, the, the bar, right? Because nobody's hitting it. <laughs> but, so the medical community has changed the bar on the test. So if you get a 5.2, you're like, I'm good. No, you're not. You need 6.5 to 7.2, right? So how are you going to get there? The only way we found today um, is through magnesium foot soaks. That's it. That's the only way. So I uh, partner with a company called, that's a long one, Living the Good Life Naturally. And um, I actually recorded an episode on my show, Health Hero Show, and it's episode 56. So if anybody wants to, even yourself included, want to get dialed in on magnesium, that's the show for you. And, And we noticed tremendous, tremendous results 
from our test case. So not only do I get to, I'm like a human lab experiment. I'm always testing stuff on myself. It sounds like you do too. Mm -hmm. My coaches do it as well. So me and my coaches, we try things first. If we get results, then we share it with our private group coaching community. So we kind of have like this living laboratory going with hundreds of people. They all try it and they report back. Like this one guy called me up. He's like, Tim, he was in his sixties. He's like, Hey man, since I had that magnesium, he's like, I got to tell you, he's like, um, I haven't had morning wood in like 20 years because I'm starting to have erections every morning. And I said, well, that's good. That's because you're increasing your blood flow. That's good. So you're re yourself. That's what you should. You know, I didn't know this, but I kind of stay this a little bit. Guys have like, I don't know, it's five to 15 erections a night when we sleep or something. So it's like these types of things are happening all the time. But when the body's not working properly and the blood's not flowing properly and stuff like that's not happening. Right. So we want to get you back to balance and back to the way the body's supposed to work. And magnesium is a critical nutrient um, to do that. So that's the way you do it. You do these foot soaks. Um, you do one a day for 30 days, saturate yourself, and then you test and see where your levels are at. And then you do it twice a week for a month and you test again. And then if your levels stay the same, then good. Boom. You know, your burn rate is twice a week. But if it's not enough, you go three a week, test one more time, and then you're good. Boom. And you're a three, three times a week. So that's, it's a little bit of a process, but you need to find out what your burn rate is on magnesium. And if the more stressed you are, you might need a little bit that's, more like around Christmas time mm -hmm. and Thanksgiving, or, you know, if there's a stressful event in your life, you might need to pump it up a little bit. So for yeah, me, my no, cortisol do... is high. I know that. Cause that, you know, I, I get to test. And so my cortisol has been very high. I have a lot of external stress, but I'm also hitting that menopause, you know, so that kind of, mm -hmm. you know, and then as you know, cortisol goes up, magnesium goes down because it takes more magnesium to deal with cortisol. So it's kind of yeah. like this inverse relationship. So you're right about the stress that really knocks your magnesium. Yeah. So do the foot soaks. And then, um, you know, I would also like episode 61 of my show, I go into depth on infrared saunas and hmm. we really need to do that. Now I know a majority of the people here eat a lot of meat. So just to be clear, like I was super duper meat eater. And then for five and a half years, I was raw living fooder, like all plants, nuts, seeds, grains, beans, sprouts, all that stuff. And then I kind of came out of that cloud. I'm like, okay, what's best using my head. And I started thinking about it. I'm not, so I went back and started eating meat again. And I've kind of found a balance where if I eat about 90, 95% um, high quality vegetation and 5% super high quality meat, that's, that's what makes me feel the best. So I'm not locked in in who knows, maybe five or 10 years from now, I, maybe I need to do 40% meat and 60% plants or 90 or hundred percent. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't care. I have no emotions to it. I just want to be healthy. I don't ever want to go on the operating table again, ever. Okay. It's not cool. It wasn't fun. Um, it's scary. Your life's completely out of control and you're in the hands of somebody else in the hospitals today are scary to me. Oh, one thing that we talked about earlier, I think is very important. So for those that are on the carnivore diet, this is very important. So one of the things that scared me away from meat for so much time was, was, was chemicals. So when you guys are done listening to this podcast, type this in umbilical cord chemical, just go umbilical cord chemical, type that into your browser. You're going to see the same studies that I saw they go back to 2005. Every time they check the umbilical cord blood of newborn babies and these young mothers, supposedly the healthiest, healthiest of all of us, right? They found, they look for 400 chemicals. They found 250 of what they're looking for. 180 of those chemicals cause cancer in humans. 212 cause developmental and brain disorders. Our children today are being born with cancer causing toxins in them. Think about that. And this is the, one of the reasons why I said we are de-evolving as a species. We're not evolving anymore because mm -hmm. we are, we are polluted we are. with these microscopic no -seum toxins. And just because you can't mm -hmm. see them does not mean they're not wrecking havoc on a cellular level and destroying your immune system and destroying your health. So here's the thing. The older we are, the more time we've had to bioaccumulate these toxins from the air we breathe, the water and the food, drinks we drink, the food we eat, right? And things that come into contact with our skin, be it synthetic clothing that's off gassing 97% of these estrogen mimickers, even after a thousand washes, right? Cloth Think about that. Clothes too. Like oh. bras, women, listen, like bras, these are high hormonal areas. The breasts are supposed to move and swing. They're part of the detoxification process. And when you hold them in there tight, they're off gassing these estrogen mimickers from the lycra and the bigger the breast, the worse it gets because then the wire under there and it holds mm. it tight. So it's a problem. Um, 
And for us guys, like when I was um, playing baseball, when we were kids, we had to have these long sleeve um, uh, sleeves that were cotton and they get soaked and wet. So when like under our armor came out, right. And Nike dry fit, we're like, this stuff's awesome. Cause it just dries itself. You don't have to change in the middle of the game and be all soaked and you feel really good and light and loose and tight. And, but the problem is, is that polyesters, dry fits, all these things, uh, lycra, spandex, microfibers, these are all made from crude oil and they take thousands of chemicals to make them. And again, 97% of the off gassing is happening. So where does plastic made from crude oil? Same process. These are plastic fibers. They're not natural. They block the sun's UV rays, UVB rays. So, you know, it's, we need that for vitamin D and they're off gassing these estrogen mimicking chemicals. So for women, it leads to things like breast cancer, ovarian cysts, uterine cysts, and for guys, prostate cancer, man boobs. So when I heard the word man boobs, I'm like, I'm not eating soy anymore <laughs> and I'm not wearing synthetic clothing. Right now, when we first started this in 2011, it was hard to find clothing, but now there's more and more natural fiber clothing. So again, what's, what, what, what's the path here? It's always back to nature, always going back to things that are natural and real and true and, and not man-made synthetic micro plastics and all this weird stuff just for convenience. And, and so we have to change things and we, as buyers, we have all the power because we can stop giving our money to companies, making toxic clothes, toxic food, toxic drinks, and give them to companies that are making stuff that's healthy. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. So my point about these chemicals is, is that just as we bioaccumulate these toxins, so do the animals that we're eating. So the longer they've had to live, right. And, and especially what are they feeding them? What are the inputs? Mm -hmm. Are they feeding them genetically modified corn, genetically modified soy? Um, are they feeding chickens to the chickens? I mean, there's crazy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. guys. Okay. It's crazy. Make sure that you're buying local, 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 get to know your farmers, find out what they're feeding them. And here's the deal. Even if they're a completely organic farm, five miles or 30 miles away, somebody's not organic and they're spraying chemicals and this thing called wind. And it blows these toxins and then the animals eat them and they bioaccumulate right. in their fat and their muscle tissue. So when you're consuming animals today, unfortunately, in the polluted world we live in, they are full of toxins, just like the umbilical cord studies. So you're hyper loading into yourself. Now in the ocean, it gets worse because the, you know, not only do they bioaccumulate in all the species, but it's called biomagnification because if the little species gets eaten by the bigger species and it works its way up to the bluefin tuna, the bluefin tunas are completely polluted beyond all get out. And because they're wild, they're not under USDA guidelines. So they don't have, there's no testing or anything like that. So the bottom line is, is that if you're, especially if you're consuming meat today, you really have to be really focused on detoxing on a daily basis because your daily it's coming into you, not just in the air, the food, and or the air and the water and the clothes you wear and the cosmetics and all that stuff, but also the food you're eating. Mm -hmm. So everybody needs to do it, especially those that are on a higher, higher uh, meat diet. They really need to be taking like these, like our toxin detox formula will take out heavy metals like mercury, cadmium, and leads, especially if you had a lot of fish or mercury fillings in your mouth. Um, you know, the, the, where I used to go fishing in the snake river, all of a sudden they started limiting us to like two fish a year. You could eat out of there because of the mercury levels. Whoa. And I used to catch like tons of crappie and we have crappie feeds and it's all kinds of, you know, and bass and catfish and all that stuff. We don't even, can't even do it anymore because of the toxins. So we have a pollution problem and, you know, you want to get the heavy metals out, the radiation, the pollution. And for those eating plants, it's the same thing. Pesticides, fungicides, herbicides. Why would you want to do that? Or you're eating a plant that's genetically modified. They've, they've messed with the metabolism of that plant and it actually, it, it, it creates formaldehyde. So we're actually embalming ourselves. And a lot of these morticians, especially for older people that are on like super processed diets and TV dinners and stuff like that, they're going in and the, and, and the morticians don't even really have to embalm them that much. They're telling us that they're already kind of embalmed. Wow. That's where we're at today. So again, back to nature, back to fresh and for high consuming, I would just say for anybody, even if you're consuming high meat diet, but just anybody, we're so, the world is so polluted today we have to get these chemicals and toxins out of us. Now, just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, learning about this and learning about detoxing and helping 600 people personally through the process and other thousands and group settings, it works. Okay. Cause we usually get people after nothing works. And then we, I've tried everything. And I'm like, have you tried detoxing? I'm like, no, what's that? <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, well, let's start there. Drink some water.
All right. <clears throat> okay. So when, when you're looking for a supplement, we were talking earlier that there are some things that you absolutely want to avoid more. There's more of that than not. Right. So how do you look for a good supplement? That is the best question of the day, right? So again, through my label reading on food and, um, and then reading a book and realizing I had to supplement, I didn't want to do it, but I did because of the soil degradation. Um, I started buying supplements. So I started reading the labels on supplements and boy, it was hard to find one that didn't have some toxins in it or just didn't, you know, synthetic. So here's the deal. 85% of all the supplements on the market are made by pharmaceutical companies. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm. They're going to get you one way or the other, and the, but they are synthetic. 92% of the supplements on the market in total are synthetic. These means they're acid-based synthetics made in a laboratory. Okay. The, these do not work well with your carbon based body. We want carbon based, real food, real herbal stuff. Only 8% is the real food herbal supplements, but you got to be careful because some of them now are slipping They're They're like blends. They're part herbal, part synthetic. But even if you do get the good herbal blend, then you have to look at the other ingredients because the other ingredients are still ingredients. And there's things in there like magnesium stearate, silicon dioxide, dicalcium phosphate. These are three of the main ones. Look up your, when you're done listening to this podcast, when you get home, you're driving, whatever, go check your supplement labels and look up magnesium stearate. Look up silicon. Silicon dioxide is a level three toxin on the EPA's toxin list, yet it's in most supplements. Think about that. Let that one sink in a little bit. So why are we doing that? Well, it's a lot of times, you know, give people the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they didn't know, right? So you and I, let's say, Amber, we decided to come up with this really good whole food supplement, right? this really good multivitamin. And we send it over to a manufacturing lab. Now we get Dr. Treadway. He's our doctor. He's, he's our formulator. He comes up with this wonderful food-based herbal supplement. It's a great multivitamin. We send it off to the manufacturer and guess what? They use these things called excipients. These are binders, fillers, and flow agents that bind things together, that fill in the empty capsules, and, um, and then help it flow through their encapsulation machines for speed of production for money, not for your health, because they don't, they're anti-caking devices, right? So think about it. When you make a synthetic molecule, it's very cheap, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Americans don't like buying empty capsules, so they fill it up with something. And what you fill it up with can be toxic. And that's what most cases it is, right? Even if it's a good one, let's say they didn't make a, let's say it was a whole food. They might use it as a, um, an anti-caking agent for that flow, that flow agent. So it doesn't cake up their, um, encapsulation machines. So now what you've done is you got this great formula, but you've just tainted it. And the easiest way to kind of illustrate this is there was this lady and she had, um, uh, like the best recipe in the County. Like she won every year. She won the County brownie recipe at the fair. Right. And her daughter comes over and she's like, mom, mom, guess what? And she had her friend with her and she's like, there's this new movie out and all the kids are going and it's amazing and it's awesome. And we have to go and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, what's it rated? She's like, well, I knew you're going to ask, but it's rated R, but it should be rated PG 13. Cause there's only one brief scene of nudity like this guy goes by the screen really fast and you can only see one butt cheek and then the other and 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 there's like one cuss word and that's it if it wasn't for that like i almost know the movie even though i want to go see it but because everybody's been talking about it but that's it it should be pg-13 she's like okay yeah you can go and the girls looked at each other like really because she knew her mom there's no way the way her mom was she's gonna let her do it and she's like we can go she's like yeah but before you go i have one 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 like one rule or one condition. She's like, Oh God, what is it? You and your friend have to eat one of my brownies. She's like, um, okay. And they reached down. They're like, these are amazing. And right before they took a bite, she's in a hold on a second before you eat that. I want you to let you know that this recipe is just a little bit different. She's like, what are you talking about? She's like, well, it's the exact same recipe I've used for all these years to win the, win the County fair. But this recipe has one extra ingredient. It's just a little bit. You're not going to notice it. It's a tiny amount. You can't even taste it. You won't even know it's there, but I put in just a little teeny, not much, but just a tiny little bit of cat poop in there. And the girls were like, Oh my God, that's disgusting. They threw the brownies down. They said, we're not eating this. And she said, and that's it. And she said, and that's exactly why you're not going to go watch that movie <laughs> because 
the cuss word and the little bit of naked stuff is not what a 16 year old girl needs to see. And that has destroyed the entire movie and your eyes don't need to see it. Right. And that's my whole point with supplements or food or any drinks that you're drinking. You can have a supplement it can be, you know, somebody like me that gets all excited about it. I want real food and I want, I want to, I find the farms that have the nutrient dense soil. We're getting the raw materials and we sun dry it. We air dry it under 110 degrees to keep the enzymes active. And there's no slave labor involved. But then we hand it over to a manufacturing machine or company and they put silicon dioxide in it. Okay. I would rather have cat poop as long as the cat's out eating organic mice than I would silicon dioxide. So my point is, is we have to become stewards of what goes in our mouths and in our family's mouths. There's nothing more sacred. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not harming you. Because I've watched, we've helped people go through and do supplement reviews, pretty much clean out most of their cupboard replace it with other stuff and, and give them some basic tools. And we watch their health come back over and over and over again, day in and day out. I've been doing this work for 11 years now. And it's, it's just so simple of a concept, but you have to have the awareness of it. You have to get educated and then you have to change those buying dollars and, and, and you will, because you'll probably get pissed like I did. And then you'd be happy to give it to a company that actually cares. Absolutely. And, you know, this is what gets me when people say, oh, you can eat everything in moderation. And to me, I'm like, so what if I put a little bit of arsenic in, in said brownie? As so long as you just eat the brownie every now and then, is that okay? <laughs> I mean, you know, there are certain things that are just not good. And just calling it moderation and who knows what the definition of that actually is for each person. That's but, just so you know, that's code word for I'm an addict. Uh, yes. And that's okay. what I say. And, ooh, and we're all food addicts. People get triggered, triggered. We are, we are yeah. all food addicts. And this is True. a very important point because it's like, it's, it's not like we're bad people out there running around overweight with all these health issues. Everybody, most, most people that I meet are good, decent people. They want to be healthy. They want to feel mm-hmm. good. They don't know how, because they're, they bought into the model. They're, you know, mm-hmm. eating foods that have been processed and all this crap that's in them today. So what we have to realize is that we are food addicts as a nation and the foods they make are so addictive, even worse and so deficient, so deficient. So we're the, 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 the overweight, you know, 55 year old male today or 45 year old female is no different than a starving child in Africa, except you got to, you're wrapped in fat because your body is telling you, I need nutrients. I need the building blocks to make my cells work and to build you and keep regenerating you, but you're not giving it to me. Cause so when, 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 when we, when we, those signals are sent to us by ourselves, we go eat and we eat and we eat and we eat and we eat. But since the nutrition wasn't in the soil and it's been pasteurized and, you know, irradiated and cooked and processed and, you know, all the nutrients have been farmed out and cooked out basically, what are you left with? You're a bunch of empty calories. So you eat and you get full and you get satiated, but your cells are still like, dude, or do that. Like I told you, I need nutrients. Go eat again. And you go eat, but you never eat foods that have concentrated nutrition because it, it wasn't in the soil. So we're basically malnourished, like an, like a, a, a very poor African child, but we're overweight, mm-hmm. no different. And that's where overfed we're overfed under nutrition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very and we true. can turn it around very quickly, very quickly. Okay. So I think we're getting close to time. So tell us a little bit about your product and how that fits in with what you've been talking about. I want, I want to know how you developed it too. Like, like where did, sure. where did you come up with the idea? Why, why is what you have in it in it? And how can that be something that you can incorporate into a diet where somebody doesn't do well with say, plant-based foods. Got it. So for me, what happened was, is as a health coach, I started doing all this research and I would find good products for me and for my coaching students. But I bought, I, I basically did the research for me first, right? Cause I was trying to take care of myself. And then I just share what I found with them. I'm like, okay, take this, take that, take this one to clean your gut, take this one to kill the toxins and do this one. Uh, this one's for your nutrition. And one thing I used to do was protein powders and I don't do them anymore. Um, because I've learned a lot since then. And I think that overconsumption of these protein powders is a reason that uh, we have so many kidney dialysis clinics popping up, just overworking the kidneys. They're not designed to consume that much of it. So um, I had this plant, this, it was actually a plant-based protein powder. It was a sprouted one. 
And then all of a sudden, I get a new bottle and look at it. And one of the ingredients said xanthan gum. And I was like, I never saw that before. Now, remember, I'm a freaking label Nazi. Okay, I'm reading all this stuff. And, you know, kind of like the soup Nazi on Seinfeld. And I'm like looking at this thing and I'm like, wait a minute. It wasn't on the old bottle. And I could see him because I had the old one and the new one. So I go looking it up. Guess what? It's mutated corn syrup fermented in bacteria. Mmm, mm, that sounds yummy. good. So why do they put it in there? They put it in there as an emulsifier. So what happens is when you have xanthan gum in there, you shake up your shake. And it doesn't settle because God forbid you shake your protein shake a couple, two, three times as you eat it. Right. So they were trying to make it more user friendly for people. And they put in some freaking thing that was weird. So I'm like, I called them up and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Like, oh, that's the way to company policy. So I said, I'm done. I ain't buying from you anymore. And I, I requested a refund and I had to call all my clients up. And I'm like, dude, take it back, get your refund. And I make all these phone calls. It was a pain in the butt. And after that, um, I had an experience where I had this, um, um, I was, I, I literally healed myself through juicing. So I, I juiced my way to back to health and I made a fresh juice twice a day. Most people won't do it, but I was super committed because my friend had cancer and I was trying to do the whole program. I said, I will do exactly what they told you to do for your cancer to support him. So he was really by me, him trying to save his own life and me helping him. I saved my own life is what ended up happening. I don't think I could have done it for myself, probably because I didn't know how to love myself. But anyway, um, there's this little old lady and I was growing sprouts and we were delivering them to 40, 50 cancer patients a week. And we had different drop spots. And she called me up and she's like, I don't have my sprouts. Where are they at? And um, I went to Dr. Bailey's clinic and they're not there. And I'm like, oh God, my delivery guy forgot to drop them off. So I said, and right on my back, my desk was a bag of these greens that I got for me for when I travel and I just couldn't juice. I could still get the, I can make juice. So this was like super concentrated green material, right? Nobody, like I had a custom made, nobody had it like this. And um, I said, I tell you what, I got these, this bag of greens. I'm just going to ship it to you and you can just scoop it. And do it. She's like, you said that the fresh is better. And I said, I know, but just try it out. Cause it was like, it was going to be like a four hour drive for me to just in traffic, go back and forth. I was lazy actually, but I just wanted her to try it too. So she calls me up in a week and she's like, wow. She goes, I have just as much energy from this because she had kidney issues. She goes, I have just as much energy from this, making this green dream. And I don't have to clean that damn juicer. <laughs> so then a couple of weeks later, she calls me up. She goes, hey, I'm almost out of this stuff and I need more. And from that conversation, and I was sitting there trying, I was coaching people. And I was like, how am I going to make a living now that I'm not a financial advisor? I had no idea. I was coaching people for very not, I didn't even charge anybody the first two and a half years because I just, I don't know, whatever. And then, um, and then I thought, she needed to reorder. And I was like, well, maybe I should just have her drink the greens. I'm drinking. They're good for her. So that's what I did. So I got pissed off because these companies kept putting stuff in there. And then this just happened with this lady and the light bulb went on. So I created, I got Dr. Scott Treadway. We created our first green, it's called green 85 juice formula. It's as close to a fresh press juice you can get in a can. And it's super concentrated. There's nothing like it because I built it for me. Like, you'd have to go buy this. If, if it had normal markups, it'd be like $117, $127 a can. We sold it for $67 for years. And you can get it cheaper on auto ships and all these things. So that was the first product. That was to replace the 85% of nutrients. So just consider it your multivitamin green. So if you're on a carnivore diet, but you want the nutrients out of the plants without eating the plants, there it is like three carbs. And it's not even the type of, we just have to put it down there per the law, but it's not like the carbs, like pasta you're thinking about. It's just kind of a law thing we have to cover with the FDA, but anyway, nothing in it as far as carbs go. And then the next product was the gut detox. I learned about cleaning the pathway of elimination out. So we found this ancient formula in Indy. We brought that over. And then I learned about chemtrails and aluminum toxicity and all this. I read that umbilical cord study and the heavy metals. So that's what we had. Uh, Dr. Treadway already had two formulas for that. He developed for the military to get the depleted uranium out of the soldiers coming back from Afghanistan, and Iraq from the mm. tank rounds. Right. So they were dying. And now children over there being born with like, I think they have like a lot of liver or thyroid cancer or something like that because of the depleted uranium. So I had him combine those two formulas into one. And we call that toxin detox. That one's for the heavy metals, the radiation, pollution, and the fat, the gut, the, no, excuse me, the fat and the muscle tissue and the blood and start intercellularly cleaning of that. So um, those were the first three. And then we ended up with a probiotic prebiotic to replace the gut mic microbiome and then a digestive enzyme mineral formula um, for people to um, really help, especially for the 
for carnivores, that's a really important formula, that digestive enzyme mineral formula. So it's going to help you with the heavy meals and, and give you a bunch of minerals that you weren't getting. So I've got um, other stuff too. We've got an alpha, call it alpha energy. It's a, um, it's just a libido enhancer for men and women. It works um, testosterone booster balancer. It just, it, if, whether you're a man or woman, it just, it works. It just, it's an old te technology from the, actually the Russians used to win uh, gold medals back in the sixties. It's an herbal technology. And then our, our most recent breakthrough product was our turmeric 100 formula, which is like an anti-inflammatory, but it's like 185 times more absorbable and anti-inflammatory mm. with the, with this machine we bought that does it. So, and it bets hundred percent natural, uh, naturally occurring products. There's no, and there's no black pepper needed because it doesn't go through the digestive tract. So it goes right through the mucous membrane of the mouth. People will take it for achy knees, their blood pressure drops 20, 30 points. So they'll take it for arthritic hands and their headaches go away. So I built it to reduce cellular inflammation so I could absorb more nutrients on a cellular level and get rid of waste matter, allow the cells to communicate better with, and, but it, it's also great for pain and inflammation. So I got a couple other products, but I don't want to just keep talking about them, but you know, people can go check them out. If they're interested, you know, they can just go to the chemicalfreebody.com. Um, I would suggest going to savings bundles so you can get a discount, pick a savings bundle. We have a little jump start bundle, kick the tires on it, stick your toe in the water and try it out or go all the way up to the total energy and detox bundle, which is what I consume on a monthly basis and the turmeric or anywhere in between fits your budget and whatever resonates with you. And then at, at checkout, they could put in the discount code Lone Star Keto, thanks to you and get another 5% off. So that way you guys can get a double discount. And we have a double your money back guarantee on all of our products. And if something doesn't work, which it can happen, call us, we'll refund your money, but then you'll get put on the phone with the coach, myself, or one of other coaches, and we'll get to the root of the problem. And we will help you find another product, even if it's another company. Our products are just part of our toolkit. We have a very diverse toolkit over here to help you uh, win your health back. So we, we do private coaching, we do group community coaching, and we have our supplements as kind of the core of our toolkit. And then we bring in a lot of stuff like the living, the good life, naturally uh, magnesium soaks and the infrared saunas. Um, uh, those are the, we just, I, I vet things. I use them on myself. And then if they work, then we share it with our audience. That's pretty much how we've been doing it. That's what I do too. I have one question and, and kind of a little bit hesitant to ask this because I don't like getting into this whole crap because people are get so triggered about every little thing, but you were talking about one of your products that helps detoxify heavy metals. Mm -hmm. Well, I know some people who have had to get the, you know, and they are freaking out about the heavy metals in it. Mm -hmm. Would your product help detoxify that part of the, you know, what? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Again, I'm not a doctor, I don't claim, but I'll, I'll give you a story. Um, uh, a police officer, a canine unit police officer called me up and he said that um, his um, son was one and a half years old. He was growing normally and everything. And he had to go in and get the MMR blank, right? Mm -hmm. And within two days, he stopped making eye contact. And for three and a half years, their life was hell, right? Aww. Doesn't talk, doesn't say mommy and daddy, um, fits of rage always trying to hit his head into walls and concrete it's just they have to monitor him like 24 7 so they said to hell after three and a half years of struggling with western medicine they said they started looking elsewhere because they were just like exhausted like fed up right and he said i started listening to podcasts and we you know we got him actually got him off of dairy and that helped him out and then we got him off of uh, then we started giving him uh probiotics and that helped. And they got him off of gluten, like and that helped. And then they got him on a full spectrum CBD and that helped. It was really awesome. Cause I'm like, those are all on our autism protocol. Like everything he just said, those three or four, I was like, wow, that's part of our protocol. That's, that's awesome. You found that out. He said, and then I was listening to a podcast about, you know, getting the blank <laughs> and um, they have things in there like aluminum and mercury like thimerosal and this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And he's like heavy metal poisoning. It's in these things. He's like, um, I need to try to get something out of my son. So he, he goes, I was already consuming your greens and loving it. Our green 85 products. So he said, I went to see if you had a toxin product. And he's like, there it was toxin detox. So he goes, my son was like four at the time. Um, so he just gave him a third of the dose 
all on his own. Didn't call us or nothing. Like, guys, we're not doctors. We just try to make healthy stuff. And within 30 days, his son was saying mommy and daddy again. And I'm actually going to mm-hmm. record him on the show here in, you know, next week, actually, he's coming on, which is really exciting to tell that story. So, you know, stuff like that is really good. Like, I don't make any claims. I don't know if it'll work for you, but it's like, you know, cause we can't say anything like that. Cause it's like, you know, they'll basically, I can't, I, I'd be out of business in seconds. So I can't, I don't, I can't make claims. We don't claim to do anything. It's just like, you gotta try it out for yourself. You know, you have to have first person experience and then you'll know, and it won't matter what anybody tells you, what I tell you, or what some government agency tells you, you will freaking know yourself because you did it yourself. And that's the best way to learn. I always lo- learn on first person experience. Hardly ever do I promote anything or do anything unless I truly know that person. I know that their quality of their character and they actually have a freaking clue and they know what they're talking about. I may do it for a while until I get to my own stuff or if it doesn't apply to me because maybe it's kind of a womany thing. But if I know that woman, <laughs> yeah, if I know that woman and she's kind of like me and she's a straight shooter, then I will say based on what she said, I would say this and say, you need to try that out for yourself and see if it works for you. That's the only way we can do this. There's no way you can't just like, you have to have first person experience. Oh my gosh. I so agree with that. And I have been so slammed here lately (laughs) on comments, just silly stuff, but it's like, uh, well, show me documentation, show me actual blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't have to show you anything. I experienced it. (laughs) I'm living it, you know? And so I don't really care what some paper says. I don't care what some government agency said or what some scientist said. I'm living it. So it's like, well, uh, you you do you, but (laughs) yeah, for, for me, it's like science is awesome. If it's Mm -hmm. actual real science, like if they're using the scientific method and what a lot of people, if you, if you're people going like, follow the science or the science is settled. Like if they say the science is settled, you know that they are a jackass Uh because it's never settled. So that is like, that's a red flag, (laughs) but follow the science. It's like, okay, look, there's this thing called checkbook science and science today has become the oldest profession. That's what's happened. Okay. It's a pay to play deal. Yep. Who's getting the grants and the funding. They're funding the people that they want and the studies that they want. Okay. So you have checkbook science, and you have scientific consensus, which is a bunch of people that are supposedly scientists. And they say, they all say, the earth is flat. And somebody over here is like, no, I think it's round. Shut up. It's flat. And that's the way it is. Well, no, I got data over here showing it's round. And that's exactly what happened. Censored. Censored. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, you're a terrorist. It's like, no, dude, the earth's round. Okay. I'm sorry. So, you know, until you have first person experience, you don't know. So most people don't even know how to read studies. I don't mm-hmm. like, I know people that I, I have some doctor friends of mine. They're like, look, Tim, most people don't even know how to read the studies. The doctors will read the first little paragraph, the summary, Conclusion. but if they really <laughs> read the whole thing, it was completely opposite of what the illusion of the summary yep. is. Very yep. tricky today. So again, you don't know what the hell's going on until you've experienced it yourself. Agree. Um, 100% period. agree. So yep. it's just, that's the way it is. Like, so you can load somebody up with a bunch of documentation, but if it's not scientific method with like, you know, the, the quickest way is just to have your own experience. That's agree. Way. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. Well, Tim, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on and Hey, while y'all are here, subscribe to my channel, go follow Tim. I will have all of his stuff below. So don't worry. And discount code, all of that will be below. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Hey, Amber, thanks for having me on. And I hope that um, just if there's one person out there, they got one thing, they go home and implement and they take action on it and they improve their life and their health. It was totally worth it. So thanks for having Absolutely. me Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. Bye.